I had been injured 17 years ago. Countless specialists, countless doctors, countless hospitals. It's so easy for someone to get lost, and then they may have gone six, nine, 12 months without any care. Most people have never heard of the Brain Injury Alliance, even though they've been around for almost 40 years. We have people coming to us two, three years after injury. They've never heard of us, and they've never received community support and connections. As a normal person, you would not know about it until something happens, and that's what happened to us. 10 years ago and prior, Science and medicine was under the idea that the brain was very static and unchanging, but in the past decade, neuroscience is unfolding that our brain is highly plastic, changeable, malleable. There is incredible hope that we can change our own brain. I myself am a brain injury survivor. I had a concussion about 10 years ago um, that caused some permanent uh, physical side effects. People don't associate things like concussions or strokes with brain injury. And a concussion is something that really doesn't show up on an MRI scan if you're not getting seen by a neurologist, by someone who specializes in the brain. Uh, you could get misdiagnosed very easily. Time is brain. As the brain is repairing, it's at its prime to start to make those new connections. And so you want to be able to make the diagnosis. What is the extent of the injury? What is the impact of that injury on function? And then now focus your therapeutic interventions at those different areas. Oftentimes we don't really realize we have a problem with our brain. And yet it can very well affect the whole family. My grandma died from breast cancer in the 70s because she was afraid to tell anybody she had it. She was embarrassed. And so now we have that with brain injuries. Across the nation, there's really not a, a lot of uniformity in how brain injury is addressed, how it's cared for. Fundraising for brain injury is extremely difficult compared to other health disorders or diseases. People don't want to talk about brain injuries. People don't want to acknowledge brain injuries. One of the least funded um, medical issues, even though it's one of the most prevalent. Hi buddy, how are you? Good to see you open your eyes again. I got a phone call. Tommy is getting airlifted to Phoenix Children Hospital. My heart just sank, and I just remember I was crying for two straight days, and the nurses were like, you need to start eating, you need to start drinking. You're not gonna be help helping your son get better if you're just sitting here and, and cry. That's when I started researching at the hospital. What can I do? My client and his fiance came in and said, you'll never believe this. We found the most amazing organization who has helped us. They have these great resources. And I said, who? And it was the Brain Injury Alliance of Arizona. And watching them get the help they needed, I started reaching out to them. I got involved and I started seeing how many people they were helping. The Emily Center gave me a bunch of flyers and a packet from Brain Injury Alliance of Arizona. And I started going through the packet and it it had information about what is brain injury, what is the Glasgow scale. It started explaining all those terminologies that the doctors were using and you're not familiar with. The Brain Injury Alliance of Arizona was started 35 years ago by a group of parents who had children who were survivors of brain injury and they could not find any resources. We're all coming together trying to solve this problem of um, bringing it so that people don't have the stigma of brain injury. We're trying to remove that stigma. So you may see somebody for a brain scan, but they recommend a psychiatrist that's gonna help you through the therapy of it. I came into the Brain Injury Alliance through their survivor path and have since become a member of their advisory board and a big vocal advocate for the work that they do in the community. There are extensive resources for, for people who are, are survivors of brain injury and for family members of people who are survivors of brain injury. So the whole side of the organization is about counseling and support groups. It's a place for people to call. I have a brain injury, my brother has a brain injury, my husband, my wife, my son, my daughter has a brain injury. When you're a family member and you're taking care of somebody who's had a stroke, the stroke may cause personality shifts and you have to learn how to, how to manage that and how to love the new person that came out of this stroke. Well, everything's affected by the brain. Everything you do from your movement to the pain that you have in your ankle. So many people in Arizona suffer brain injuries every year, tens of thousands. That's why it's important that we support 
the Brain Injury Alliance, both money, with volunteering your time, with support. At some point in our lives, from birth to transition, we are all likely going to have some kind of brain issue that we need to resolve. And the Brain Alliance is the organization that will be there for us. And I think that destigmatizing uh, issues related to the brain are vital in order to move forward and actually treat those disorders. I think the Brain Alliance injury is essential in this community. Many people have nonprofits who they absolutely have a personal relationship or a personal reason that they donate. I think the Brain Alliance affects all of us, and we should all have a personal stake in the growth and the expansion of this organization. At some point in our lives, from birth to transition, we are all likely going to have some kind of brain issue that we need to resolve. And the Brain Alliance is the organization that will be there for us.